In this lesson, we're going to look at a special kind of dynamic game, or game that takes place over time, and we're going to look at something known as the infinitely repeated prisoner's dilemma. So remember from the first set of lectures in the tutorial, uh, we have a prisoner's dilemma game represented in this normal form, and the unique Nash equilibrium is for both players to confess. If you don't remember, please go back and review those videos. Now what we're going to do is we're going to modify this game so that it's not just played once, but it's played an infinite number of times in succession. I guess that's bad news because it means the same two people are getting arrested all of the time, but nevertheless, that's the game. So what's going to happen is in time step one, the players are going to play Prisoner's Dilemma. In time step two, they're going to play Prisoner's Dilemma. And this process is going to repeat indefinitely. Now this is a special kind of, sequential, or of dynamic game. It's not necessarily sequential because it's not player one acting and then player two and then player one and then player two, but it does take place over time. And what makes this different from a simple one-shot game is that players can condition their actions on what they observed in the past. In, in the economics parlance, this is known as history, histories. Their actions are history dependent. But we can think of it as something like, if I see my the other guy is always not confessing, then I won't confess either. That's, that's kind of the notion of this infinitely repeated game. Uh, if we really wanted to, we can draw it out in a game tree, you know, like we did before and see something like this, where each node here, decision node, corresponds to a full history of past actions uh, by both players. We're not going to draw that out. It's, well, it's infinite, so we can't. But even just one or two steps, um, it gets pretty big pretty fast. So we're not going to draw that out. Now, there's two things that I want to introduce here. One is a discount rate. We're going to call it R. And the discount rate represents how much a player values the present relative to the future. This is kind of founded in a very simple idea. If I were to tell you I will give you $100 today or $100 in two years from now, what would you prefer? Most people would prefer the money today. In fact, you might even be willing to pay something so that you can get the money today instead of in two years from now. For example, you can say, I can say, I will give you $99 today or $100 in two years from now, a lot of people will take, might take the $99 today. That means money today is worth more to them than money in the future. R, the discount rate, represents that trade-off between money today and money tomorrow. Now this video is going to be dependent on you knowing um, calculating perpetuities, uh, which is a stream of payoffs that go infinite into the future. I can provide some references in the bibliography if you're not familiar with this yet, but if you open up any finance book, it's probably going to be chapter one, lesson one. So I also want to introduce something known as grim trigger strategies. So what this says in Prisoner's Dilemma, it's a strategy. Now remember, strategies are history dependent. So you have to specify what the players have to specify what they would do for all possible combinations of past actions. So here's a simple one. Play D. Don't confess. Unless the other player played C at some time in the past. Okay, so this says always play D unless the other person plays C. And in that case, as soon as you see the other person confess, then you confess from that point on. So let's suppose both players are playing Grim Trigger. Well, if both players are playing Grim Trigger, they're always going to play Don't Confess, Don't Confess, and earn three forever. So what is the present value, or the total discounted sum rewards, of getting three forever? Well, it's getting three today, plus your discount rate times three tomorrow, plus your discount rate squared times three 
in two periods from now, and so on. This equals, again, please open a finance book. If you haven't seen this before, check the references. 3 over 1 minus R. And let's say, for example, if R is 0.5, that means $100 tomorrow is the same as $50 to you today. If R is 0.5, then your total discounted sum rewards would be 6. 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. 3 divided by 0.5 is 6. Okay, so this is player 1. We'll call this player 1's payoff. We'll look at all of this from player 1's perspective. So player 1's payoff, I'll put a little G here, under Grim Trigger, when player 2 is playing Grim Trigger, is this. What is player 1's payoff if he confesses? Well, first of all, if he confesses and player 2 is playing Grim Trigger, that means he's not confessing. So player 1 will get 4. But in the next period, because player 2 is playing Grim Trigger and saw that player 1 confessed, player 2 will always switch to confess. And in that case, it'll always be in player 1's best interest to confess from that point on. So from that point on, he'll earn 2. But because that becomes in the next period, he'll earn r times 2 plus r squared times 2, and so on. So this total payoff, we can calculate this from confessing, is 4 plus r times 2 over 1 minus r. The 2 times 1 minus r is because he will get r from this point on. So it's again another perpetuity. We multiply it by one more r because it happened in the next period, in period 2. So the period 1, period 2, and so on. So if player 2 is playing Grim Trigger, what should player 1 do? Well, player one will only consider two strategies here. He can either also play Grim Trigger or he can confess. Which one is better? Need a little more screen here. When is it better for him to also play Grim Trigger? Well, this must be better than him confessing. 4 plus 2r over 1 minus r. Okay, so we have an inequality here. This is the condition where Grim Trigger is better, GT. So we can solve here, and what we want to solve for is R. So this means that 3 minus 2R over 1 minus R is greater than 4, which means 3 minus 2r is greater than 4 minus 4r, which means 2r is greater than 1 divided by 2 divided by 2, which means r is greater than 1 half. Okay. So we have this condition right here that says when is it in player one's best interest to play Grimm's trigger instead of confessing. And the condition is if his discount rate is greater than one half or 0.5. So what does this mean? Remember, the discount rate represents how much you value the future relative to the present. The higher R, the more you value the future. So what this is saying is that if player one values the future, it's not worth it for him to earn four today and then two forever. He would rather earn three today, which is less than four, but then earn three from that point on and forever. Or in other words, player one is willing to forego a short-term gain in utility from three, or short-term gain in payoffs from 3 to 4, if he can be guaranteed a higher long-term payoff. That's the case if R is greater than 1 half. 
If r was less than one half, then this says that player one doesn't value the future. And you can take the simple case, if r is zero, player one doesn't value the future at all. He only cares about this instant in time. So if player one only cares about today, r is zero, then of course he'll prefer to confess and get four versus the three because he doesn't care about the future. So the rest of the future payoff means nothing to him. So if player one, I'm sorry, if player two is playing Grim Trigger and R is greater than one half, player one would also be willing to play Grim Trigger. So we can show, there's a little bit more details here to show because we have to do the exact same thing for player two, but both players would be willing to play Grim Trigger if both players' discount rate is greater than one half. So what we see here is when players are repeating a game infinitely over time, if they are patient enough, if they value the future enough relative to the present, then we can then it is possible to in equilibrium in the prisoner's dilemma have them both not confess. This is one of the main theoretical tools in game theory that is used to introduce the notion of cooperation. Players are willing to forego short-term gains for the promise of longer long-run payoffs, and thus they can earn rewards higher than they could if they were only playing the game once. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I know there's a lot to it. I left out a lot of details. We didn't even necessarily show that this is a Nash equilibrium. You have to believe me that if R is greater than one half, this is a Nash equilibrium. But I hope that you saw that there is this notion that players are willing to trade off short-term gains for more long-run gains, and then that can encourage cooperation between players. Uh, I'll provide several references uh, in the bibliography section for those that are more interested in this phenomenon.